action. Hi, my name is Paul Malloy. I'm Neil McCullough. And I'm Lennis Garrett. And we are Team One Up with Oregon State University Senior Design. Today we're going to be giving you an overview of our project, the Nintendo Entertainment System Game Development Cartridge. Uh, and we will give you a, an explanation of how it works with block diagram, then we'll give you some unique design considerations and demo, and then we'll wrap up with some advice for next year's seniors. So the goal and purpose of our project uh, was to quick and conveniently allow a way for current game developers to get their games on the Nintendo. And so even though the Nintendo has been discontinued for about 20 years, there's still people that are making games, and in order to test the games, the easiest way is to use an emulator on your computer. Uh, but these are not perfectly accurate, and so uh, for the best accuracy, you need to actually get the game and play it on the Nintendo. And so our project allows you to do this quickly and conveniently. Uh, and so now Linus is going to give you an explanation of how our project works and talk about the block diagram. This is the block diagram and this is how it works. So the user will load a game into the host application. They'll press right and then the data will be written out via USB to the microcontroller. The microcontroller coordinates with the mapper to program the memories and part of this is that the mapper isolates uh, the memory from the console. Also, the microcontroller sets the mapper configuration using the header information from the NES file. After programming, the user will reset or turn on the uh, NES and now the NES can access the memory and communicates with the mapper to provide extra features for the game. The data buffer is used to uh, connect to the console. The cartridge is 3.3 volts and the NES is 5 volts, so the data, data buffer helps facilitate that. The power distribution provides the power to the car cartridge that's either from the NES or from a USB cord. The kick or the CIC block is, used, is a security chip that is used to keep the NES from resetting and the case contains the cartridge. Now that Linus has talked about how our project works, uh, now we're going to talk about some of the unique design considerations. Uh, first of all, uh, our cartridge was made voltage independent, so basically any uh, game console that you plug it into, or this be, or be a clone console or a Nintendo, our cartridge is going to operate. Uh, the input from the console or the cartridge is also the output to the data buffers, which helps us, or which allows us to play it on those. So I'll show it playing here on a three and a half volt clone console. You see that that works just fine. And I'll mention another unique design consideration is that our memories are battery backed, so that way when we unplug the cartridge, there's no information lost, and we can plug it into the Nintendo, and it doesn't, or it keeps us from having to reprogram every time we break a connection. Now we can see the cartridge operating on a 5 volt Nintendo. Alright, so now that Neil showed you one unique design consideration, I'm going to show you another. So our main goal was to make it quick and easy to develop games for the Nintendo. And this used to be a cumbersome process, but now all we need to do is take our USB cable and we'll plug it into our cartridge. Now that we've got the uh, Nintendo the case and everything properly set up here. So uh, I made a, a demo of a simple Pong game and uh, here we're just going to go ahead and compile it and flash it. So right now we have uh, the ball speed set to 1 when it starts off and so we'll just go ahead and uh, compile it and program it to the cartridge and now we can uh, we left the Nintendo off so we can Turn it on, and hit reset, and we've got uh, the ball speed starting out of speed of one. And so now, if we want to, you know, change our program, all we do is we come back over here, and we will modify this to start off at the speed of three. Save it, and go over and recompile and then write our new version back onto the cartridge and uh, just hit reset and now we can see it starting off with the faster ball speed. So 
This makes it a lot faster and quicker to uh, implement a change in your game and see it, its response on the Nintendo uh, very quickly, which was one of the main goals of our project. So next we will show you how uh, the design considerations were made for the mapper. So another unique design consideration that we had is we wanted the device to be usable to develop uh, new mappers for uh, homebrew games and expand the capabilities of the games that could be created. And the way that we did this is we utilized a uh, CPLD, and we used the uh, Lattice Mach XO2 CPLD, and uh, this allows the user to generate new mappers using uh, hardware description languages. And so I did this using Verilog. And uh, here's the, the structure of the code here. So we've got the top structure, and then we have it separated into uh, the programming portion of the code, uh, and then we have the mapper portion of the code. And so really, we've got um, all of the different mappers uh, programmed and configured onto the CPLD at the same time. And so when the... Uh, mapper register stores the header it will operate the multiplexer to select which uh, mapper that game uses and so right now we've got all the discrete mappers and uh, MMC1 and MMC3 running and I'm currently working on FME7 uh, and so the usage even though we have all of these uh, mappers programmed onto our CPLD at one time uh, you can see here that we're using about 56% of our available logic uh, running all of these. And so uh, this creates an easy way for a user to uh, come up with a new mapper, uh, compile it, and program it onto the cartridge and uh, test these features uh, quickly and easily without needing to uh, assemble any hardware doing any soldering or anything like that it makes it really easy to uh, design and test new mappers and so now Linus is going to uh, show you a quick demo of uh, how easy it is uh, to utilize different mappers while testing alright so now I will show you how easy it is to program different games with different mappers uh, currently we have Action 53 that which is running VN ROM and now I'm going to go ahead and put in a new one uh, we're going to use Battle Kid 2 demo and it is running it is running UN ROM so I went ahead and loaded it up and we're going to go ahead and write it and you can see it's being written right now and now it's done and so the process of doing this is that it uh, that the uh, all the information is stored in the header of the NES file, and so when the when we get that information, we, we send that to the CPLD, and the CPLD uses a MUX to determine which uh, uh, mapper to use. So now I'm going to go ahead and do another mapper to show you another example of it. So we're going to go ahead and put on uh, D-pad Hero, and this one runs MMC3. So it's programming again. And for the last one, we're going to program Dryer, which is MMC1. There we are. And that's how easy it is to program. So the, the biggest advice that we could give to next year's seniors is just get started early. Uh, we started over the summer, had a pretty good idea what we were going to do, built some prototypes and it worked pretty well. The uh, second thing that we would recommend is uh, build a lot of prototypes, a prototype in small pieces, uh, test those pieces, make sure they work before you start putting everything together as one big block. It's going to make your troubleshooting a lot easier and it's going to make you much more successful in the end.